Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'll be taking a look at some of the questions from prominent opposition leaders, Keir Starmer and Ian Blackford. The vast majority of it, Keir Starmer. I mean, you get three times as many questions anyway. But uh, to do with the COVID restrictions being eased and Boris Johnson's responses, I want to draw people's attention to the fact he gave out figures that were intended to downplay the threat of the third wave. But when you consider what those numbers mean, what he's actually saying is that the death toll is going to be way higher for the third wave than it ever has been before. And he doesn't care. But uh, first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So um, Starmer first, uh, of course, and, and it's very much about the madness that is the government's COVID plans for this month. And uh, to save time, I'd better begin with where we are to avoid waffle when cutting through Boris Johnson's nonsense responses. The last week has seen another 50% increase in the seven day moving average of new COVID cases per day. The anti-lockdown brigade are coming out with their usual crap about hospitals managing. However, at the same time as the government, some government officials who should know better and the anti-maskers saying that hospitalizations are weighed down so there's no need to worry, hospitals, including one of the largest hospitals in the country, are, are announcing that cancer and other important treatments have started to be cancelled again because they're being overwhelmed with COVID cases. Do you know what that means? It means that there are hospitals around the country that are not even coping now. In less than two weeks, we're not just removing almost all restrictions, but the plan is even to remove measures that are in no serious way even a restriction, like wearing face masks in shops. Starmer's first question was to ask what was going to happen to deaths when the government opens up in England. Now, Johnson tried to say that deaths are down to a 30th from infections. Now, I've not checked the numbers, and I accept that being an ignoramus on these matters, Boris Johnson may have got that wrong. He may be uh, blurting out the wrong number. But we have to go with what he said. We assume he's been briefed. Is he saying that one in 30 people becoming infected die? Is that, he said, it's down to, a, deaths are down to a 30th from infections. That's huge. Is he trying to suggest that's a small number? That's massive. When we get to 100,000 new cases a day, that would mean over 3,000 people a day dying from it. I sincerely hope he got that figure badly wrong or he misused it. That figure is not what he said it was because we've never even had a daily death rate of half of that before. So that had better be the wrong figure or he's going to murder many more people before he's done. Then Starmer reminded everyone that the rates are high because Johnson allowed the Delta variant into the country. At this point, and those who follow social media may have seen that this has been going around, he called it the Johnson variant. Now, Labour should do that in all seriousness. Every Labour MP, councillor, even activist, should call it the Johnson variant. Not just in Labour, anywhere else. In much the same way I wanted... Um, people to refer to the Northern Ireland protocol as the Boris Johnson protocol. Imagine how much more difficult it would be for the government to be following their current withdrawal agreement line if we called it the Boris Johnson protocol. Because he's trying to disown it. He shouldn't. Pin things on him. Pin things on him. Politics changes dramatically on descriptors and Labour should make more use of them. Starmer then asked if the Prime Minister was comfortable with a plan for 100,000 people a day to become infected. Johnson, of course, then brought in vaccines. He said that vaccines pre prevent, uh, sorry, provide more than 90% protection against hospitalisation. Now, I mean, I could explain how this ignores the risks with those who don't need hospital still. Long Covid, infecting others who would then need hospital and all the rest of it. But I'm going to focus on the specifics. Let's go with Johnson's figure again there. Sounds quite high, doesn't it? Oh, that's over 90% protection against hospitalisation. What he's actually saying is nearly 10% of people infected will need hospitalisation. Is that what he's saying? Because that is, again, huge. So, again, when we have 100,000 new cases a day, 
Boris Johnson reckons we'll need to be able to cope with nearly 10,000 new hospitals a day a couple of weeks later. Obviously, bear in mind there's a delay between infections and hospitalisation, between hospitalisation and death. But is that what he just said? Is that what he just said? We're going to need an influx into hospitals of 10,000 new COVID patients a day on top of people who would naturally need hospital. Because that's what it sounded like, he said. And if we started from a base of having every single hospital bed in the country free, it would take about two weeks to fill them all up at that rate. That's all. Actually, I tell a lie. I forgot that Boris Johnson said that over 3,000 of them will be dying a day. So that'll extend it a bit. Might take near a month. Because that's the thing. You listen to these figures he's coming out with and they're intended to make it sound like this third wave may be bigger, but thanks to the vaccinations, it's nowhere near as serious because he's saying, oh, it's down to this figure or it's only this figure. But when you consider what his own figures mean, you actually apply it. It's truly monstrous, really monstrous. I'll be honest, I didn't think the figures were anywhere near as bad as he was suggesting in Parliament. That's what's giving me hope he's just babbling the wrong numbers or in the wrong context because he doesn't understand them. But if he's right, if he was properly briefed and he actually read his brief and those were the right figures, I do not know how they think they're going to get away with this. See, I understand that the reason why they're actually peeling back all these restrictions, I, I gather, all very off the record, is that the numbers aren't there for the government to get this through Parliament without Labour votes, basically. Um, they have got a few things through with opposition votes last year, but it was usually just a, a modest number of Tory rebels. I get the impression that if it went for a vote for any more delays on restrictions, that he would have faced a serious rebellion. He would have got it through, but he'd have, got, he'd have needed Labour votes and he would have split his own party. So what's happening here is it sounds like, again, this is journalists, you know, talking to ministers and MPs off the record, it sounds like um, even Boris Johnson wouldn't have done this were it not for his MPs. But it really doesn't matter. He, at the end of the day, he's the Prime Minister. He makes this decision. Um, then Johnson tried another of his tricks in saying Starmer supported a thing one week and is changing his mind the next, which is, of course, not even remotely true. Starmer has called for us to suppress the virus so that we don't need the lockdowns. He's also called for Johnson to present a plan for ending the lockdown. But that's like saying you want to cross the road, but then you get to the road and you see it's very heavy traffic. Well, I'm going to wait for the traffic to die down. And then someone else saying, oh, you're changing your mind about crossing the road then. No, I still want to cross the road. I just don't want to do it in front of a juggernaut at 60 miles an hour. Starmer came back by saying he wanted to open up in a controlled way, including, he gave specifics because anyone can just say, oh, no, I just want it opened up better including masks on public transport and better ventilation, as well as support for those having to isolate. He asked what the estimate was for people having to isolate. How many are you expecting to need to isolate? To which Boris Johnson had no response, uh, other than to try and ask Starmer what he would do, at which point the Speaker reminded him, this is Prime Minister's questions, these are questions for the Prime Minister, not for the Prime Minister to ask everyone else. Um, now, if I was Starmer, every time he said that, I would have a stock response. Whenever Johnson tried that, it would be to suggest, um, I would say, look, I'd be more than happy to take over government policy. You know, I would stand up and say, I'm ready to be prime minister as soon as the current prime minister is bored with destroying the country. And I would make a variation of that, my response, every single time Johnson tried to pull that one. Because I remember Starmer did something similar last year, but he needs to do it every time. Every time Boris Johnson sounds like he's asking Starmer what to do, he should say, I'm more than happy to, to, to run this show. I'm more than happy to be Prime Minister right now. Gets it in people's heads that you're the Prime Minister in waiting. Because I think he would gain a lot of capital from that sort of politics. You know, using the term Johnson variant, it's good, but it needs to be consistent. You know, use the same devices, be consistent, and get Labour MPs and others in the party and other parties to use the same devices constantly. Then it'll cut through to the public because it'd be like background noise. Starmer also pointed out that the test and trace system was at risk of being overwhelmed, which I thought was a rather charitable thing to say, as we've never actually had a test and trace system that wasn't in a permanent state of being overwhelmed since before the first wave. Obviously, then it wasn't Dido Harding handling it. He asked what Johnson would do about the risk of people deleting the app for fear of the millions of people being pinged this summer. 
because that's what's going to happen. We're going to get a ridiculous number of people told by the app to isolate now. Um, Boris Johnson, all he could do to that was to say he didn't understand what Starmer was asking. I mean, frankly, if the reason why he seems unable to ask, answer the vast majority of his questions is because he doesn't understand them, why doesn't he just say so? But Johnson feigned ignorance because he knew it was a trap. Starmer wanted to know how many people were going to be asked to isolate when we get to 100,000 new cases per day. Johnson didn't want to answer it. And Starmer gleefully pointed this out to everyone. You know, I did see someone, someone writing about this later on, pointing out that Johnson might have made more of an attack on this point. You know, because he keeps asking what Starmer would do instead. Now, bear in mind, although he's not supposed... You know, Starmer um, technically doesn't have to respond to that, but he will because he's, he's the government in waiting. You have to be prepared to say what you would do in the same situation or you don't look like you are a government waiting to take over. And Johnson knows it as well. doesn't matter how many times the speaker tells him to shut up. Starmer knows he also has to say something there. Um, as it happens, there would have been an answer. It wouldn't have trapped Starmer at all because later on, Jonathan Ashworth, who is the Shadow Health Secretary, set out exactly what Labour would have done, what their alternative plan was. Uh, Labour on top of this, I'm pleased to say, for once. Not for practical reasons. They're not coming up with these plans because the government might go, oh, that's a good idea, we'll do that. The government will never take on board their suggestions unless they're forced to. But Labour know they need to have a plan every bit as detailed as if they were in power for two reasons. One, they need to be able to communicate to the public that another option was available. This will be critical because the government's path is always, the, when it turns sour, it's always the same. They try and say, well, what else could we do? What else could we do? We were just backed into a corner, unprecedented situation, all the rest of it. Don't let people think it was Obson's choice. Let them know, no, there was a plan. We said, we said what the plan was. We could have done this and it would have been better. Second thing is Labour made a great deal of progress last autumn when Johnson had to finally do what Starmer had been telling him to do for weeks before. You know, he keeps trying to call uh, Starmer Captain Hindsight. But then, of course, when Johnson has to do exactly what Starmer told him to do weeks before, all of a sudden it's Captain Foresight. They want another dose of the same. Because we need to remember that the reason we're in a situation where millions of people could be told by the app to isolate, it's not a random occurrence that could have befallen a Labour government if they were in power, or even a competent Conservative government. This situation exists purely because we have a Boris Johnson government. Hilariously, someone tried to ask uh, the New Zealand Prime Minister if, uh, if New Zealand should follow Britain's example. It's like, you what, mate? We've had 26 people die from this. Britain's had like 140,000. And even, you know, given the difference in population, that's still way, way more. You know, if you, if you were to, what was it now? New Zealand population, about 5 million. We've got, so we've got about uh, 13 times as much. Knock that down. That would be 26 deaths against over 10,000. I don't think New Zealand are going to follow Britain's example, if I'm totally honest. Then Starmer asked directly about face masks. Why not keep those rules, he said. Uh, Johnson said it was common sense for people to wear masks on the tube, but he wants to move from legal diktat to personal responsibility. It's interesting he mentioned the tube because London Mayor Sadiq Khan said that he would still require people to wear them on, on the tube, so Transport for London are still going to insist on that. Uh, but Johnson, again, seems to not understand the purpose of government. Personal responsibility is a matter for personal consequences. The purpose of government is to make people responsible for the consequences of their action for society at, at large. You know, how have we gotten this far into the most serious pandemic of our lives and still don't understand face masks are not about protecting us, they exist to protect others. I wear a face mask to protect others. In fact, without people having to wear face masks in the shops, I am you know, likely to need a face shield because I'll take the view, I'll go to shops less. But if I do, I'll wear a face mask to protect others because face shields do nothing for that. But I will then wear a face shield to protect me. It's not a personal measure. It's a collective one. Parliamentary rules and guidance exist to deal with collective responsibility. We don't leave that up to individuals. But this is why it's bad at any time to have a Conservative government, but especially bad at a time like this, when the whole country needs to be led we have a party in power that doesn't believe in government. The Conservative Party is actually very old, hundreds of years old, and it has always existed for one purpose, to, present, to prevent the government actually governing. That's always been its purpose. 
It's been its purpose in the 20th century, the 19th century, the 18th century, as long as it's been going. Um, but then it was Blackford's turn. He attacks the government's plans on what they're calling the Electoral Integrity Bill, basically voter suppression. He asked why the government were making it harder for people to vote. Now, Johnson tried to defend his photo ID. Um, now he's, say, he's switched it. Now he's saying we need photo, vote, uh, photo ID not because it's needed to tackle fraud, because he knows that that's absolute crap, but to tackle the suspicion of fraud. That's what it's about now. It's to tackle the suspicion of fraud. But there exists the possibility that he's shooting himself in the foot here. Earlier this week, David Davis spoke out against the measures. And I think a few other Conservatives have shown concern as well. The issue is that this sort of voter suppression hits the poor mostly. You know, those who are less likely to have photo ID. And you can sort of see why Conservatives want to do that. Well, the Conservatives appeal to the wealthy and Labour to the poorer. But it gets flipped around quite a lot. You know, um, these are just the sort of people the Conservatives have been successfully targeting with their populist agenda over the past few years. But they've been losing support amongst um, the middle classes, where Labour have been picking up. So they could well be suppressing their own voter base here in what may, may well be the biggest own goal in recent political history. Blackford did get Johnson to say that people would be able to get photo ID if they need it which is an odd thing to say, um, he is compellingly, he is legally compelling them to need it, isn't he? Like, if they need it, what do you mean if they need it? What do you mean if they need it? You're making it the law that they will need it. Of course, it won't be true that they'll be able to get it. You do not enact voter suppression with one hand and then cancel it with the other. So if it's going to happen, and, and there doesn't seem to be anything to stop it, I really hope it bites the Tories on the arse and hits their voter base hardest. Because it will be absolutely hilarious. It's still wrong and it still needs cancelling as soon as the Tories are out of power. But it would be absolutely hilarious if uh, polling sort of discovers later on that the Tories lose their power because they hit their own voter base. But those were the main leaders in PMQs. The second half of 2021 is going to be politically dynamic. Uh, Labour have given themselves a boost with Kim Ledbetter, their new MP. I noted that Boris Johnson, the graceless oaf, refused to welcome her to the House. Boris Johnson seems to be at the end of the line with the pandemic. His only plan now seems to be to wish it away, as if removing the measures will fool people into thinking the measures are no longer needed. The people of England are about to find out what happens when you elect a man whose answer to every problem seems to be just believe hard enough. And if the problem doesn't get solved, it's because you didn't believe hard enough. But believe hard enough and everything will be fine. You know, that's his approach to Brexit, his approach to COVID, it's his approach to everything. You know, only someone extremely entitled and wealthy can go through life like that. It's going to turn out very far from fine. But there we are, those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.